Today's episode of the BS Podcast brought to you by SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor. I don't even remember how long it's been. Find the best tickets for round three NBA before round three NBA ends. Uh, for round three hockey in the Stanley Cup Finals. Hopefully Ottawa's not involved. If, if, if Ottawa's involved, you might be able to find those tickets for cheap, cheap deals on SeatGeek. I have SeatGeek on my phone. It is by far the easiest way to shop for the best tickets thanks to their revolutionary grading system. I've actually been looking at Dodgers tickets lately because I, w- I wanted to uh, take my son to a game because he suddenly loves baseball, which I don't understand. But uh, very easy. You just look at you look at the colors. The darker the color is, the better it is for your tickets. Buy and sell in just two taps on your phone. Everything fully guaranteed. Try it out. Download the SeatGeek app today or go right to SeatGeek. We're also brought to you by a new, new book by our old friend Rafe Bartholomew. It's called Two and Two, McSorley's, My Dad and Me, a new memoir. Rafe and I worked together at Grantland for the entire four years that I was at Grantland. He was one of the original OGs. He wrote a lot of great stuff for us, features, boxing. He was uh, our features editor for almost the entire time. And, uh, and he's a wonderful writer. Check out this book, especially if you're from New York City. I, I, there's probably like a 90% chance you've been to McSorley's. So check it out. It's on Amazon. It's in bookstores everywhere. And, uh, and it's really good. And you know me, I'm a sucker for father-son stuff. So anyway, Rafe's new book, it is called Two and Two, McSorley's, My Dad and Me. Check it out. Get it wherever you get your books. And we finally, we are brought to you by Wilmore's new podcast, Black on the Air. He talked about uh, Cosby at the beginning of the one. A really good breakdown of why Cosby should just shut the hell up. And uh, Trump's Three Degrees of Lying. Larry Wilmore, Black on the Air. Subscribe now. Same for Cousin Sal, Against All Odds. He had... Our cousin Jimmy Kimmel was on that podcast on Wednesday. Tate, you, yes, you went and produced that. It was great in his office. Yes, great times. Good times. Very funny. You were available. Chippy. Learned a lot about Aunt Chippy. Okay, great. Check that out. <laughs> cousin Sal's against all odds. We're gonna do a mailbag today. It's a May mailbag. We actually have a cousin Sal question in the mailbag, but we have a lot of good stuff. There's so many things I want to cover that I just said screw it and decided not to have a guest. So the guest is myself, but Tate's going to chime in. We're going to do a mega May mailbag. Here we go. All right, let's do it. I'm going to rip through these. So I, I listened to the first couple times we did these, and what I need to do is read the question and then say my answer, so you know that I'm done with the question I'm actually answering it. But if you want to send any questions to for for this down the road, either for the written mailbag or, or the podcast mailbag, just send them to the mailbag at theringer.com. That is not hard to remember. The mailbag at theringer.com. Before we get into this. I wanted to talk about, I went to Boston for game seven of the Washington series, which I discussed with Joe House. I apologize for the terrible uh, phone connection. My fault. I forgot to bring the equipment. I got a couple emails like, how do you guys not have better podcast equipment? And the reason is I forgot to bring it (laughs) and made the mistake of thinking that my cell phone would be better than the hotel phone. And I just blew it. So my apologies. But I went to Boston. I was there for three and a half days. I brought all the good weather. Everybody was so happy. It was nice out, Tate. It was like you're walking around Charles River and just people just couldn't couldn't run and bike fast enough. They yeah. saw the sun. They're like, oh, my God. Like People were half naked running yeah, it's around. It's like there. freedom. Like seeing yeah, freedom. Yeah. It, was, it was great. So uh, you're welcome for bringing the great weather. So I went to the, the Game 7 on Monday night, which was spectacular. Watched the lottery at my dad's house. And we won. And we were holding his new puppy, Winnie, who was like eight and a half weeks old. And I was like, we got to get the puppy. She might be good luck. Win is in the title take mm-hmm. of her name. Yes. She, so we win the lottery. Then we go to game one. We're like, oh, this is great. This is the greatest week ever. We're You're going the, three for three. You're yeah. two for two going for three for Run three the at this point. Yeah. Um, and then LeBron just kills us. He, here's what I want to say to the Boston fans going tonight. I've never seen in my life anyone bitch for more calls than LeBron James does. 
He bitches for calls. He bitches when fouls are called against him. He talks to the ref. He talks to the coaches. It's just a constant yap session, which yeah. he has earned because he's the third best player of all time, in my opinion. But I w- the the crowd was the crowd really hates LeBron. The Boston <laughs> crowd, like it's it's a real hatred. It's respect mixed with like genuine uh, dislike of just w- watching him be a baby for six to eight nine years, however long it's been. And everybody was so angry. It was almost like just people yelling different things. Nobody could galvanize behind one chant or whatever. Yes. It's easy. Just chant, you're a baby, Adam. (laughs) When he starts whining, you're a baby, that's it. Just get it going because I I don't think it's going to affect him because he's like a robot. Well, he's already embraced it. He has that commercial where he he turns into a baby. Yeah. Yeah, he loves it. So it will affect the refs. Yes. The refs are the key to this, not LeBron. LeBron's going to do his thing. He loves the hate. He feeds off it. He learned from his Miami days. But the refs shouldn't be able to be more afraid of LeBron than 18,000 people. I agree. And the Boston fans have to affect the game tonight. They have to yell at LeBron. They have to yell at the refs. And anyway, that's that's my advice. Just chant you're a baby, Adam. If you want to chant other, other <laughs> stuff, come up with that stuff too. But you, the Celtics fans have to mobilize tonight because the crowd – could not figure out what to do. And when, and the other thing is when Isaiah doesn't get going, the crowd kind of – we can't win without Isaiah. It was like game. Isaiah and Horford were both one – I think they were both one for eight to start the game. Yeah. So when you have that, it's like two for 16, your two best players. That's tough. When he's passing up 12-footers, Isaiah, you know he's in trouble. All right, we're going to get to the, the mailbag. Here we go. Ryan from Brooklyn, New York asks, you are Danny Ainge. You have the number one pick. You want to trade it for a star. Which stars are worthy of trading this year's first round pick for? My answer. So you'd have to be careful with somebody who has a chance to get out of his contract. So normally it's like, oh, Kevin Durant, let's trade it for him, but he's a free agent. So you got to rule out basically all the the guys who can get out of their contracts in the next couple years. I would not trade the pick for Jimmy Butler. Wow. I'd rather keep it for this reason. I don't think they can win the title anyway for as long as LeBron's LeBron. I would rather see them try to sign Gordon Hayward, keep Fultz. Mm-hmm. It's a better asset. Um, and just kind of build for the next five years versus like trading for Jimmy Butler, who we could sign two years from now when LeBron's, you know, two years older. Was there buzz for Hayward in Boston? There's lots of Hayward buzz. Right okay. Now. That's yeah. good. That's there's, what I expected, but yeah, I just didn't know lot. people really wanted him that bad. The Stevens, like, uh, Titus covered it on our podcast. Mm-hmm. The, the, the fact that Stevens recruited him and he was like 5'11 and Hayward grew and stuck with Stevens. Like, there's some loyalty. It's amazing that Mark Titus thinks he's better than Gordon Hayward still to this day. <laughs> he absolutely <laughs> thinks that. And, and he's wondering why the Celtics aren't pursuing him. So here's who I would trade the number one pick for. I made a list. Anthony Davis, mm. obviously. Jokic, Towns, Giannis. Ready for this one? Clay Thompson. Who got snubbed. Yeah. Got snubbed from the uh, All-NBA team. He feels like the fourth man. Yeah. The odd man out. So maybe it's an option. And the more I'm thinking about it, probably Jimmy Butler. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trade it for Paul George. The, the, the difference, the, the, the key thing with that pick is it's $7 million a year for that salary cap slot, whereas Jimmy Butler makes like twenty. Yeah. So if you're actually like Belichick wouldn't trade it for Jimmy Butler. Belichick would say, No, this is great. I got a seven million dollar asset that I can groom into a star and then a year from now I'm gonna kick Isaiah to the curb and I'll move this guy in here. Yeah. It's a good thing Belichick's not running the team. <laughs> but uh you know, Jokic, Towns, Giannis, there's no way they get those guys for the number one pick. Davis, they would have to do and I don't think New Orleans would even do this, but you'd have to do Jalen Brown, yep, this pick, the Brooklyn pick, and you know Jay Crowder and s- something else. And you'd would have the Pelicans to go all in. even be good with those with those options? Could they even make that work? This is a team that drafted Austin Rivers number ten. No, that I mean, <laughs> if you're the Pelicans, you yeah, keep like, Andy David. That's yeah. why I think. I think the Celtics are keeping the pick. The only thing I could see them doing, I think they're going to keep their cards close to the vest. We're not going to know who they want, what they want to do. Mm-hmm. And they're hoping that somebody is going to do something stupid and make some crazy offer. And I think Philly is the team I keep looking at. So Philly's three. Yep. 
Philly moves up to one and they get Fultz or Lonzo. Probably Fultz. Yes. You put Fultz with Ben Simmons and Embiid, that's like that's it. That's that's it. That's if, scary if you team. keep Embiid and Simmons healthy, that's you, those are your three guys for the next ten years. And Fultz doesn't need the ball in his hand. So that, no. that that eliminates the whole problem of like who needs to hold the ball. Simmons Simmons can have the ball. Fultz can roam around, hit threes, stretch the floor. It makes sense. So if they love Fultz, and I don't know if they do, would you offer the number three pick? Mm-hmm. Saric, who you don't need because you have Ben Simmons coming, and next year's Lakers pick to move up two spots. Next year's Lakers pick might not be a great pick because yeah. you know you who knows they're going to try to get better this summer. Yeah, um, they're not going to have it anyway, so that it's not like they're going to be like do something stupid like what Brooklyn did, and it takes the pressure off. The Celtics, right? Be honest. You, if you disagree, tell me. No, I'm just saying. It is that a, enough? Is that too much for that pick? I don't think it's too much. I just think that there is pressure on the Celtics right now to take Fultz because he's the unequivocally right, the best player, the number one guy that everyone thinks. Which I, I'm not necessarily sold on that. But I don't know if they are either. Yeah. So if you, so basically, if they could bait that situation where they they can sell that number one pick off to the Sixers, they get that. They don't tell pick. anyone what they're thinking. Yeah. And then they get what Josh Jackson at three, yeah, and then Tatum. I think Tatum. they, I think they like Tatum. And I, I mean, I they like love, Tatum. They've always loved Duke guys. Yeah, but so you basically you turn that pick into Jason Tatum or Jackson, Sarge, Sarge, yeah, and next year's Lakers pick. And so what does that what does that lineup look like with that team? Is Sarge at the four? Yeah. So basically, you're you're replacing Amir Johnson with Sarge. That's an upgrade. Yeah. You you would I would think trade Jay Crowder at that point if you do that trade, which is fine. And do you have Gordon Hayward still in this scenario? You might. So if you have Hayward, Sarge, Horford, Avery, Isaiah, that's your starting five. Yeah, something like that. That's not bad. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I, I get to talk good. myself into that. But what are the, what does Brian Colangelo think? Do you think he's really sold on Fultz? I see. I don't think. I think that they're thinking. I think they Fox. take. I think they take Fox. I think they're, and they, even if they, even they may even try to trade back, right? Because they're just like we could maybe get Fox at five. Maybe they try to trick the Kings into moving up. I think Fox doesn't go lower than three. Wow. I'm because he's going to work out for these teams, and they're going to freak out. They're going to be like, "Oh my God, this guy could be Westbrook." I'm a, I'm a fan of Fox, but might I just, be too high. Yeah, I think it's too high. I think he's perfect to the Kings at five. That's what I see happening, but I don't want. I don't Did want him to get wants stuck to go there. there. No, I don't want to. I don't want him to get stuck there out in Sacramento. The buzz is that he wants to go there, and he's friends with Kali Stein. <laughs> I don't know if I believe it because who the hell would want to go to Sacramento? All right, next one from Mickey in New Brighton, Minnesota. Was Harden's listless Game Six against the Spurs the worst performance ever by a star in a crucial playoff game? It reminded me of Pippen's migraine game, but he was an MVP candidate. It's way, way up there, and it goes on his NBA resume, and it's on the short list. You know, off the top of my head, Rick Barry in 1976, Western Finals. Warriors are the favorite to go back to the finals. They've won the year before. Gets in a fight in the first half. I wrote about this in my book with Mm -hmm. Ricky Sobers, who just starts punching him at half court. Both of them stayed in the game, by the way, because this was 40-plus years ago. And what the Warriors didn't really defend Rick Barry because they didn't like him. Yeah. So at halftime, he saw apparently he saw the replay of what happened, and he noticed they didn't defend him. So in the second half, he comes out, he just doesn't shoot, and he's just doing these really angry, crisp passes, and just doesn't shoot for like a quarter. Yeah, and I know it because I got the tape from the NBA, and I watched this, and it's crazy. And and they lose this game to to Phoenix, who never should have beaten them, and they're home. Yeah. So that's up there for me. The Pippen migraine game. I went to those LeBron 2011 finals games in Dallas, especially four and five. And he was so far in his own head. It was like a meltdown. I think you got to look at that. And LeBron uh, game five, 2010 against the Celtics mm-hmm. are the two that's where it's I, like he melted down. I was thinking of Delonte West. That's the, that's the, yeah, the Delonte yeah. West season. Yeah, yeah. That's we'll leave it at that. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's a, Kobe gets off the hook because he was good in the fourth quarter at Game 7, 2010. But because he started crashing the boards, he got some calls. But that really would have been the all timer if they lost that game. Yes. Because at one point he was like three for 19 or something. He was just single handedly shooting them out of the title and it would have completely changed his. 
Yeah, well, Legacy. everyone's like, this is this is the Kobe ball, ball hog. He has four rings, you know. Yeah. Like, he completely lost it by, you know, going back to – he reverted back to his own problem. Which yeah, is he couldn't, like, yeah. couldn't handle it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next question. I have to think about that one more. I have, to, I have to comb through history and see if there are any other, like, just complete meltdowns. I will say the Harden thing. This next question is now a fair question from Bakir – Mirza, I hope that's the correct pronunciation. Is James Harden the Peyton Manning of basketball? Big stats. <laughs> um, a storied history of not doing well in the playoffs. 2012 finals, he was terrible. 2013 against OKC, even didn't do to, great. Even back to college at Arizona State, it was the same thing. Once Arizona, he got that was the wrap on Yeah, him. when he got to the NCAA tournament, it kind of looked like he was already one foot out the door. Herb Sindek was like, what are you doing, James? Can you help me out? 2015 Clippers game six. He's so bad that mm -hmm. they just take him out and he sits on the bench with a towel over his head and Josh Smith and Corey Brewer bring yeah. him back. A I real champion game. He Corey quit. Brewer yeah. uh, <laughs> brings him on. It's a little early to call him the Peyton of basketball, but uh, it's certainly in play. Do, do you even now think, here's where the Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning has two Super Bowls. Yeah, I, I would say I think that's like giving like some credit to Harden even to give him that yet. Yeah, probably is. He is putting up big stats. Alan from Alabama asks, how many years until we look back on the extinct position of coach GM and all realize how idiotic an idea that was? I think we're here. I think we're here right now with Stan Van Gundy and Doc Rivers. You know, once upon a time, like the Red Arback days, he was coach GM, traveling secretary, trainer. He did everything. And then eventually teams realized, well, this is stupid. But um, we had player coaches and through Dave Cowens in 1979. In my opinion, I, I think a player coach makes more sense than a coach GM. Mm -hmm. A GM is its own job. You shouldn't have any other job than being a GM. Player coach, it's like, could LeBron coach the Cavs conceivably with just a bunch of assistants? Like, yeah, probably. I think he already does that. I, I, I was going to say, I was there the other day, and it seemed like he was coaching the Cavs. Ty Lue was kind of pointing at people yeah. a couple times. Ty Lue just has to act like he's doing something at all times, right. just so he has a job. So... I mean, my guess, the owners, especially in the NBA, because it's young money coming in, the owners keep getting smarter and smarter. I can't imagine. I can't imagine this is going to continue. Mm -hmm. You just look at, like, somebody's got to do a piece of, like, here are the last nine times somebody's tried to run and coach an NBA team. I guarantee it would not be good. Slink. That's that's his name. He didn't even <laughs> give a city. He said, Like a slinky? That's Slink. Weird. That's his name. I'm watching Black Hat. And Chris Hemsworth's accent is the only thing I can pay attention to. Not sure what he was going for other than, quote, American, unquote. <laughs> it's like someone is doing an impression of someone doing a fake American accent. It has to be one of the top 10 worst movie accents ever. Why didn't they just make him be from Australia? I saw this movie in the theater with Chris Ryan. Mm. And that was what we left the theater asking. Why not just make him Australian? Why can't he be an Australian hacker? Why was he talking like this? He was doing like a sliced alone. And it really, it sidetracked the movie. What's crazy is it was on, I think, FX or TNT. I was flipping channels last week and it said Black Hat Director's Cut. Oh. There's a director's cut of Black Hat? <laughs> Do you think it's just them just making sure he stays with his accent at all times? Just yeah. yelling back at him? That's if there's a director's cut, they should have CGI'd about his old accent back. That was terrible. Um Adam M. asks, what are the chances LeBron Sr. plays seven to eight more years waiting for his one-and-done son to enter the draft, then pull some GM LeBron shit to make sure they draft LeBron Jr., and then they obliterate the league as the first father-son NBA duo? So this cannot be ruled out because I went to a game on Wednesday night, and LeBron is in his 14th season and has played 50,000 minutes, and he played the entire game. He came out for two minutes in the first half, played the whole second half and came out with like a minute left. And I'm sitting there going, this is, I, I don't even understand how this is physically possible. So I, I think he could play till he's 50. And LeBron, senior and junior, I would say, if I gave you 10 to 1 odds, would you put 100 bucks on that? Yeah, I could see it. I mean, that's the sort of how his mind works. And I think the Miami move, like, he preserved his career. Like everyone thought that was such a like a ring chasing he wants to grow up, but it was genius because he could defer at times and now it's elongated his whole career. It's like True. now he can stretch out his prime because he didn't have to kill himself to make sure he had to get there, which was it, that that just shows he's making chess moves. 
I think it was that and only that that's elongated <laughs> his career. <laughs> Just the- Tim Tim wonders, couldn't the Celtics shop Lonzo around and see what the highest offers are, then tell the Lakers they're selling the number one pick, comma, Lonzo Ball, comma, until the Lakers trade up to one and send the Celtics an asset. Great theory on paper. I am not convinced the Lakers are taking Lonzo Ball. I don't think we have any evidence other than Lonzo Ball's crazy dad repeatedly saying how he's playing for the Lakers and the fact that he's a fun passer like Magic Johnson was and he went to UCLA. So you have these three peripheral reasons, but we have no actual evidence the Lakers want to take him. They already have a point guard. Two years ago, they spent the number two pick on a point guard. Yep. We have no signs at all that they want to take Lonzo Ball. And we're not even sure he's the second best player in the draft. And his dad has been a crazy person. And they celebrated the pick on the local news. I watched the local news here in California, and they right. showed the video of the Ball family and them doing that celebration. I just think that's bad. That's bad karma. You can't do that. You can't celebrate before it's already happened. You can't just celebrate the pick being there and expect yourself to be taking it, too. I mean, what they really should do is flip picks with uh, Sacramento. Oh, drop back to five. Drop back to five and make Sacramento take the Dan contract. Mm-hmm. Make them take some bad contracts and just be at five. They're going to get somebody good anyway. But man, get, cut some of Rudy the Rudy Gay would call Luau Day and just be like, I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> I'm so, so don't, sorry. Don't try to squash the trade. I'm not sold on them taking Lonzo. I think it'd be really fun if that. I mean, if for NBA fans, it's the most fun if they take Lonzo. It's the it's the biggest uh, sideshow, whatever. How how long how long is the podcast right now? Or oh, 20 minutes, 21 okay, minutes. Let's, let's talk about our friends at ZipRecruiter. I, I can't top the uh, the read that Jimmy Kimmel did for ZipRecruiter on Cousin Sal's against Amazing. the odds pod. It was really, it showed the difference <laughs> between the true professionals and people like us. Are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? Well, posting your job in one place isn't enough anymore with the perfect hire. You need to post your job on all the top job sites, and now you can. ZipRecruiter.com. Post your job to 100 plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. In fact, over 80% of jobs posted on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate in just 24 hours. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Simply screen, rate, and manage candidates. All in one place with ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use dashboard. It is easy. I did check it out. Mm -hmm. I like easy-to-use dashboards. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates, rate them, hire the right person fast. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 1 million businesses and has been featured in Forbes. Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine, The New York Times, TechCrunch, and CBS. Right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash BS. Once again, ZipRecruiter.com slash BS. All right. Before before we uh, get back to the mailbag, I wanted to mention we're putting up this piece today on The Ringer. Uh, It's a game we like to play for upfronts where we create shows. And it's a salary cap, and you have to do it. Do create the show within fifty dollars of this fake salary cap that Sam Shuby made up. Mm-hmm. You know Sam Shuby, big fan of Shuby. Yeah, the oldest twenty-seven year old in America. Yeah, just just always twenty-seven, holding it down. but he easily could pass for a forty-seven year old. Like, just say he's a weathered soul. He's yeah, an he's, old soul. He's a wise man. Wise man. So he did. Uh, he did this salary cap game, and and. Uh, and I came up with a fake show, and I'm going to read it right now. It's called Chicago Juice. Okay. Have you heard this? No. Okay, good. Is Tupac in it? No. Or is Hologram? Chicago Juice, the latest spinoff series from Dick Wolf. You know how they have all those Chicago <laughs> yeah. shows? Yes. Adam Driver and Jay Farrow are lifelong buddies from Chicago who moved to L.A. to become actors after college. Neither of them caught their big break, so they had to work at Creation. You know creation? Yeah. It's like that gluten-free organic so it's a juice, juice place. place. Yeah. It's a juice, but they have like salad wrap sandwiches and healthy salad, <laughs> salads with fake chicken. Yes. So they start working there to cover their rent. They become gluten-free health freaks. Yeah. They just, they, they buy into the lifestyle. Now they're moving back home because their acting has failed to open their own creation franchise in downtown Chicago where they quickly become outcasts in the land of deep dish pizza, heavy beer, and two-pound Wrigley Field hot dogs. They have nothing in common with their friends anymore. In the first episode, Driver's character gets knocked unconscious at a Cubs game after telling an overweight Cubs fan that he should stop eating bread. (laughs) Goes to the hospital. An adorable resident doctor, played by Nina Dobrev, Mm. treats him 
and happens to be the only other gluten-free person in Chicago. <laughs> See, really, there's no, nobody's gluten-free in Chicago. <laughs> she starts moonlighting at the creation store. She's a little chemistry with both guys. You don't know which way she's going. Every episode is filled with gluten-free shaming and someone trying to either rob their store, set it on fire, outright trying to shoot either driver or pharaoh. Think two guys, a girl, and a gluten-free pizza place crossed with Chicago PD with extra turmeric. Chicago juice. That was Coming my show. this fall. Coming this fall. <laughs> if you want to read everybody else's fake shows, go to theringer.com. I was really excited about Chicago juice. I think it has a chance. Uh, Wesley Maddox writes, here's my crazy theory on how the C's can exploit their home court advantage. LeBron isn't going to be intimidated by any hostile road crowd. But couldn't he be psyched out by an extremely over-the-top supportive crowd? What if they cheered every time he touched the ball and chanted MVP at the free throw line, uh, cheered whenever he brought the ball up, and just a whole bunch of LeBron love the whole game? Would that throw him off? I say no. I think LeBron's immune to the crowd. I think they should just show like the 2010. Like they should just show the the highlights of LeBron like choking in the Garden. Like and they should just throw it up on the on the big board. Everyone cheer at that. Obviously, it'll make him mad, but it also will get in his head because he's like, oh man. I do remember those. Or show moments. like the 2011 finals. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They should just, like show just show moments of LeBron's career that didn't go well. Like show 2007 finals. Just show Tim Duncan. Just zoom in on him. You know, getting rebounds over LeBron. That's in the a finals. good idea. Yeah, that's what they need. Do you know what they do? The Celtics. LeBron. Anytime he commits a foul, he looks up at yes. the jumbotron. Yes. So the Celtics never show the replay, <laughs> like which drives it crazy. <laughs> so when he's looking up, they should just show the 2011 finals. <laughs> yes. Anything to get in his head. Yeah. Uh, Zach Taylor asks, with Harden and Westbrook having great regular seasons but not being able to get it done in the postseason, who are the best players that have never won at all? My answer. I came up with a starting five and a second five. Mm -hmm. Center, Patrick Ewing. Forwards, Elgin Baylor, Carl Malone. Guards, John Stockton, George Gervin. Ooh. Second team, Charles Barkley, Nate Thurman, Dominique Wilkins. Steve Nash, Chris Paul. I like that. I will say I I, I like Dominique on the first team. I'm so team, you'd, you'd bump put Elgin Do- or Mailman? No, uh, no, I'd bump uh, Gervin and put Dominique there. I, I'm not playing three forwards. Yeah, don't, come on. Don't don't I, try to do I'm weird put, positions. I'm, I'm positionless basketball no, these I'm days. No, I'm not positionless basketball <laughs> with my fake teams. Joel in Jerusalem. How about that for <laughs> Joel in Jerusalem? Keep emailing us, Great Joel. Great alliteration. I was a Chargers fan until effing Spanos moved them, and now I hate them. I need to find a new team. Can you help me? So I've gotten this question a few times, actually, including Dakota, who's working for The Ringer now. He's a Chargers fan who has dumped the Chargers and is trying to figure out what to do. I think it's really hard to just start rooting for a new team. You can do it like if you move to Nashville Mm -hmm. and everybody's Predators crazy and you start going to a couple games like, ah, I kind of like the Predators. I don't think you could just go, I'm a Chargers fan now, I'm a... Now I'm a Panthers fan. I'm going to root for Cam Newton now. That's just weird to me. I also don't like that because the Chargers, when they came here, like Phillip Rivers and all those guys, I feel like they've been really, you know, they've they've been active and vocal to say, we still love San Diego. Yeah. We didn't want to leave. We 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 wish that we could play for those fans. So I, why are they turning on them? Phillip Rivers. Yeah, what did not- Phillip Rivers do? Yeah. All he did is have kids. Phillip Rivers is like, I just want to play football. And I wish I was still in San Diego. It's a lot nicer. It's, you know, less traffic. They're all traumatized. Yeah. So why, why do they ha- why do they lose their fans? I'm and, with you. And Joey Bosa was excited, and Philip Rivers told him he couldn't comment on it. He was like, he was only there for one year. He can't comment on San Diego. Here, here's my advice: if you're really looking for a new team, uh, of course it involves gambling because I have a gambling problem. <laughs> pick a team, pick an over under, win total, and just bet on that team, and ride that team, and then also put a bet on them for the Super Bowl. So bet, you know, bet the Tennessee Titans, bet on their over. Mm-hmm. And bet, and just every year adopt a team and root for that team and have a financial incentive. I would do that over just randomly. I think that's the team. NFL's dream too, because then it, they don't have to worry about like you know fans. catering to fan bases. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Roger Goodell's like that's great. Daniel and Austin writes: I read your tweet making fun of emotional support dogs on airplanes to my wife, and she's ready for, to vote for you to be our next president after Trump gets impeached. So, I flew to Boston on Monday morning. And this family was on my plane, and they had two 75-pound chocolate labs that were, quote-unquote, emotional support dogs. This was a very normal, 
adult couple. Yes. Seemed totally fine. Actually seemed like a little on the wealthy side with like a four-year-old kid who is nothing wrong with the kid. And he, here's why I tweeted that. Because people are like, how dare, how dare you emotional support? Like some people need those dogs. I'm not saying like some people don't need those dogs. I'm saying... Anybody on the planet can go get an emotional support dog license. You just got to go on the internet. It take, there's been all these stories. Go read them. It takes five minutes to go create some fake excuse to get your fake dog. And why people are doing this is they're trying to save money either on shipping the dog um, or if you go away for three weeks and you have to hire a house sitter to walk your dog. And this stuff, is amazing. I had no idea these more, are real problems. Yeah, this is a real problem. <laughs> These people had to fly to Boston. They had these two seventy-five pound chocolate labs in the in the in the do, bunk. In where the bunk do the head. dogs sit? Do they I have seats? I don't understand it. <laughs> it's just it's crazy to me that two years from now I'm not going to be able to bring my laptop on an airplane, but I could bring all three of my dogs. All I have to do is get a license from <laughs> from some random internet site that I have emotional problems and I need my three dogs with me at all times. What kind of country are we creating, Tate? Well, do you have to pet the dog a certain amount of times for it to qualify? Yeah, for you like- have to look like... <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. I, I, listen, I, nobody loves dogs more than me. I have three dogs. We yeah. just adopted a third dog, Willie. Who wakes me up every morning by biting me in the head? <laughs> um, I love dogs, but we we can't like break the rules with dogs and don't just exploit be, the system. Yeah. Don't exploit the system. Yeah. Don't ruin it for us. Don't ruin it for the people that actually need an emotional support dog because you know they're blind yes. and they need to bring a dog on a plane because they can't see. Not not just because you didn't want to pay for a house sitter for three weeks. You guys are the worst. <laughs> Matt Colorado asks in your Isaiah LeBron column, you mentioned the inevitable trilogy. Shouldn't it be called the three match? My answer, no. I like the trilogy. <laughs> three match is kind of fun, but not really. Snatch from America. So far, we've had a snatch and a slink. I don't know what's going on with these. Uh, I thought it was the movie Snatch that no. you were going to ask. I was like, wow, what a what Snatch a Snatch in Marin County. Let's say Trump shut down the NBA because he thought the acronym was too similar to the NRA. <laughs> New league started next season. The entire NBA players and coaches went into a draft. One season, 20 teams, 60 games, eight teams make the playoffs. It's a great idea. The championship team wins $1 billion to split between <laughs> players and coaches. I still like this idea. How many players would get drafted before Popovich gets picked? My answer. Yeah, I don't think he goes in the top 15. Popovich doesn't go in the top 15? No. Wow. But I think around 16 to 20. Because at that point, you're like, oh, I don't have a superstar. I'm going to build a team. He's and a this mid-first guy knows rounder. You know who he yeah. is. You know? yeah. But I think he goes four spots higher than that. I think somebody, it's like fantasy. Somebody <laughs> just, Like when Gronk goes nine picks yes. too early. Somebody just jumps on him early and grabs him. Taylor from Pachogue. I think I said that right, wonders. Multiple times over the last couple of weeks, you've claimed IT is the most popular Celtic since Larry Bird. I think Paul Pierce would like a word with you. Don't be a prisoner in the moment. The truth shall set you free. My answer, Paul Pierce was never as popular as Isaiah Thomas is. People love Paul Pierce. It ended really great. It's it's the cherry and the hot fudge Sunday of just the guy who stayed with the team for a long time. Everybody he got loves him the number him one pick this year. Got him the number one pick. It's great. He was never as popular as Isaiah Thomas is. He, the fr- I was there the first couple years. Um, in the from after they made the playoffs, o two to o five, he got very strange, mm-hmm. and I think there were some residue effects of like when he got stabbed and maybe hanging around with the wrong people, and it reached a point where in o five they there was like should we trade him? Mm-hmm. Um, he had a meltdown in the Indiana series, and people wanted to trade him, and Danny tried to trade him for Chris Paul. And then he had two nondescript years, lottery year. KG shows up. KG was the most popular person on that Celtic team. I hate to break it down. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I feel like he kind of took his... I love Paul Pierce. I just want to say none of this reflects my feelings on Paul Pierce. I'm just saying what people... Like there were more KG jerseys in the stands during Mm -hmm. that time. Then that five-year run ends. And then he gets traded. And now people are very nostalgic. He was a great Celtic, all that stuff. Isaiah's on another level. I mean, Isaiah's like any kid under 13 has an Isaiah jersey the crowd feeds off him in a way they never fed off Paul Pierce and I don't think it's close I, I I think it's the parallel for me is more like Ortiz when Ortiz started to take off with the Red Sox in 04 um, Cameron and Austin wonders the fact that Kawhi was injured on the Bruce Bowen special is pretty damn funny you gotta admit right my answer is it's not funny 
but I do think that I don't know if Pop should have gotten as self righteous as he did about it when Bowen made a career out of doing that. Yeah. Because you employed that guy on your team. You never intervened when he did that stuff. And he was the dirtiest player of this century so far. He kicked someone one time. He was just flat out dirty. Yeah. And, the, and part of what he tried to do was put it in the shooter's head. Like when I take a jump shot, this guy might go under my feet. Mm -hmm. That's not what Zaza did. Zaza is a big, I, I don't know whether he meant to do it or not. He probably did. It felt like it was intentional. But he did, he hasn't made a career of like when you shoot a jumper, I'm gonna jump under your feet, which was what Bruce Bowen that was part of his calling card. Yeah. So I I'm a big karma guy. I just think it's interesting that their best guy got knocked out on a Bruce Bowen. Play. And Kawhi questionable for game three tonight. Officially questionable. I love Kawhi. I mm -hmm. mean, why why did it have to be Kawhi? Couldn't it have been happened to another spur? I wanted to watch Kawhi try to beat the Warriors by himself. Tim from Woodridge, New Jersey asks, if Castaway really happened, there's no way Chuck and Kelly don't eventually wind up together. In 2010, in 2000 when it came out, Chuck just goes on his own way, they never see each other again. Ten years later, they're both on Facebook. They wind up connecting and getting together after Kelly's inevitable divorce. Oh, man. My answer is that's the plot of Castaway too. <laughs> but the problem is Chuck at that point has gone to a really dark sexual place with putting volleyball masks on girls' heads. Yeah. He can only get an erection if you have a volleyball mask on your head. Wow. Yeah. This is, so I've, she's got to work with it for that. Yeah, away. it's much darker. Castaway <laughs> is much darker. Uh, Johnny Minnesota wonders, does the Net Celtics trade officially top Herschel Walker as the most ill-considered of all time right now? We've been waiting for a long time for somebody to take that mantle. It was not ill-considered when it happened. The trade made sense. They were dumping, for them, they were dumping Gerald Wallace, three years, 30 million. They were giving up three picks that they didn't think were going to be in the lottery. And they were getting Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. They already had Joe Johnson, Darren Williams, and Brooke Lopez. And we all thought that that team was a championship contender. Yep. They didn't know KG was luggage. Yep. They didn't know that Darren Williams was just going to come out of shape and, just, yeah. and not give a shit. Mm -hmm. Now he looks like a middle linebacker. Spent two months Very with LeBron. Yeah, he's in great shape now. <laughs> Best shape I've seen him Unbelievable in. Unbelievable shape now. It's the, it's the Versa climber. LeBron yeah. introduced him to the Versa climber. Mm. And now he's in great shape. Yeah, whatever but whatever the kids call it these days. It's the Versa, the Versa climber. <laughs> yeah. It's a great great machine. We got to get one for the ringer. But, um, but, you know, the big mistake they made was the pick swap. Yeah. Because that got thrown in at the last second. And... The reason they do it is like, well, we're, we're going to be better than Boston four years ago. You don't know that. You're already giving them three first-round picks. My only thing that people should remember about that trade is the price to dump salaries because the cap was much lower. If you wanted to dump salary, the price was two first-round picks. The Warriors dumped B. Adrians and Richard Jefferson and two first-round picks to Utah. Mm -hmm. So that was that established the market for if you want to get rid of a terrible contract, it's two first rounders. Yep. So they had to get rid of the two of them. The third one is worth it for Pearson Garnett. The, I don't understand why they did the pick swap. That's a uh, Duke grad Billy King just coming in uh, trying to make it happen. So then, the, yeah, Duke grad. <laughs> and then uh, the other problem with that is, you know, the picks didn't have to be this bad. They yeah. didn't have to buy out Darren Williams and Joe Johnson last year. Like the Celtics shouldn't have gotten the third pick last year. Mm -hmm. They should have kept Darren Williams and Joe Johnson. They're paying Darren Williams anyway. Lopez is there still. They're paying him. They're paying him. They bought him out for like thirty-five million dollars. Why are you buying out players when you don't have a pick? Yeah. Make him play. Make the guy retire. Isn't this just a way to make sure that Prokhorov is always remembered, like in the lineage of NBA history? When well, it comes down to it, he's the he worst. One of the worst owners of all time. Um. <laughs> Let's talk about Simply Safe. Man, we haven't talked about these guys in a while. I love Simply Safe. Our longtime buddies, when you order Simply Safe Home Security System online, you're taking the first easy step in protecting your home and family. Entry sensors, motion sensors, glass break sensors. Your home will become a burglar's worst nightmare. Setup takes under an hour. Simply Safe comes pre programmed to work out of the box, plug in the base station. It'll talk you through the whole process. Even someone who isn't the slightest bit handy can install it, and the entire system is wireless. No need to drill holes in your walls or do other permanent damage. Once you're set up, Simply Safe makes it just as easy to stay protected month to month. No long term contracts, no hidden fees. $14.99 a month for 24 7 professional monitoring and emergency dispatch service. 
Don't wait another day to take your home safety into your own hands. Simply Safe is even offering my listeners 10% off your home security system. When you go to simplysafebs.com. Tate, like three years from now when you're really raking it in, <laughs> but you're not, you, you have like your first house, your starter house. Yeah. You're, you're on ESPN two. You're like, <laughs> you're, you're like arguing with Bumani Jones. His show's been canceled, but now he's with you. He's making a comeback. <laughs> And uh, what a time. so if your starter house, you'll have your Simply Safe. Yeah, that'd be good. I hope yeah. that they're still with me at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Simply Safe be like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to get it. I need an alarm system. My, my old friends at Simply Safe, I'm getting it right here. <laughs> uh, Simply Safe with two eyes. Get 10% off, protect your family the smartest way. Simply Safe, BS.com. All right. This is a big one from Jamie in Toronto. If Tiger came up in the age of social media, would Earl Woods have been the golf version of LeVar Ball? Oh. Earl once actually said the words, Tiger will do more than any other man in history to change the course of humanity. Pretty bold, right? Is Earl the closest we have to LeVar in terms of overbearing fathers to up-and-coming athletes? I think it's a fair comparison. My answer. Yes. I mean, he's like Earl Woods in the social media slash 24-7 sports talk age. Yeah, I don't think and people a little crazy. I don't think people could have handled Earl Woods in today's world. Oh, he would. They would have gone nuts. Him with the whistles on the course, following yeah. Tiger around at school, blowing whistles like so yeah. that he would never be affected by. It. I mean, he was actually all up in his business. Like I think Lavar actually probably means well. Like he has more well meaning and, and goodwill towards his kid. Like Earl Woods was trying to build an actual like superstar that was almost not even a human. He was trying to build like Jack Nicholas cross with Gandhi. Yes. Like he's trying to heal. He was trying to heal all racism in America with his, <laughs> with his, uh, his son. Yes. Uh, I tweeted about this a little bit this week. I have a real problem with the LeVar ball, like ESPN and Fox, just putting him on over and over again, mm -hmm. hoping he says something dumb so they can get content out of it. I saw on a, an awful announcing they had all the times, all the times LeVar ball has been, on one of their platforms in 2017. Care to guess how many times? I'm gonna say 21. Oh, that's high. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I've seen him. I feel like I've seen him everywhere. He's been on FS1 eight times. Wow. And he went on like podcasts and or other platforms for them five times. Mm. And they've tweeted about him like over a hundred times. Well, so you just keep having him on. And I gotta be honest, like, you know, they kill him when he's on that show including Christine Leahy, who's from Boston, so I'm not saying anything bad about her. But she did kill him on that show. He watches the shows. He watches all the shows. He tapes all the shows yes. and just fast-forwards until... Until they talk about until him. Until he sees the name LeVar Ball. Yes. So he's seen everything. Mm -hmm. She trashed his parenting. Yes. She trashed his shoe plan. All that stuff was just a hater, which was his point, was you're a hater. And he flipped the line on her because she said that Lonzo was scared of him. And he was like, I'm scared of you. So that's how that's how he like. Right. So that's how informed he was on the conversation going into it. And his attitude was, I'm here to talk to Con Coward. You're sitting be 50 feet behind me. Which is weird anyway. Which is like, that's a problem with your set. You're not treated as an equal on this set. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at Con Coward. Why are you talking? You hate me. <laughs> yeah. And then said it badly and came off like an ass. I'm not defending like what he said, but he was put in a position to come off like an ass. And then they get three days out of, con of content out of yeah, it. Yeah, it's still going on. People are still talking about and it. She, and she's like on the next show talking about it. It's like, oh, at 530, I'll be on talking about my <laughs> conflict with LeVar Ball. It's like, yeah, of course LeVar Ball is yeah. going to get into it with your show. Yeah. I thought that was ridiculous. And it's just a, a microcosm of how these shows work now. You, Bring the person on. I got in trouble. I got suspended from Twitter when I was at ESPN, which I thought was hilarious because Richard Sherman went on Skip Bayless' show. Yes, I remember they this. They promoted it. They're going head to head. They're going to fight all this stuff. And they come on, and, and Richard Sherman was like terrible to Skip. Like he was actually like kind of mean, and it wasn't fun. He didn't even let him like talk. He was like, I'm coming at you, Skip. I'm coming at you. Yeah, but it yeah. wasn't fun. No, it wasn't no, no. Like, it was oh, an attack. Wait. It was a yeah. blatant attack. Yeah. It, was, it was mean spirited. Yes. And my whole attitude watching it was, and at that point, like, I'm Team ESPN, right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing Grantland. I'm doing 30 for 30. Like, I'm actually really care about us doing good stuff. And I'm like, how is this on our network? Yeah. Why are we promoting somebody coming on and embarrassing somebody who's on one of our television shows? And I tweeted something about it. And then I tweeted that 
it was embarrassing for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. And then ESPN's like, you're suspended from Twitter for two weeks. We can't have you questioning uh, this horrendous programming choice we made because that's causing a bigger shitstorm. I'm like, what about the shitstorm <laughs> itself? Why are you mad at me? Yeah. I just want to do good work. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, do you think the Lakers, I just want to ask, do you think Palinka Magic, they're obviously seeing all this LeVar stuff in in LA, FS1, Fox Sports is around, it bounces around, people see it on TV. When they see all this stuff, do you think it affects them? Because I don't think Magic, I think Magic stays in his happy bubble on a lot of this stuff and mm -hmm. like sees Lonzo as the player is, uh, that he is, but I think Palinka... I feel Polinka like he has a better feel. I feel for like it. he has a, a, a yeah, he has a bigger picture kind of angle to see like what this will actually impact and what he's going to have to deal with. And I mean, because if they don't take Lonzo too, say they take Josh Jackson, I don't know what happens then because people are going to lose their shit, especially Levar. They'd have to condition people over the course of a month. It can't yeah. be like a sneak attack on the day of the draft. They don't take him. I. <laughs> But I'll tell but you this. But what do they owe to the Ball family? Is that that's the whole they thing? They owe nothing. They, I, should, yeah. they don't have to take Lonzo. I know. It's that, ridiculous. That's what I'm so confused. Where everyone's already like preconditioned to believe that he is going. But we even we he covered is. that earlier, though. There's yeah. no there's no actual evidence that they're going to take Lonzo Ball. It's yeah. all like material stuff. I'll tell you this: Magic does not care about any of this shit. He doesn't. <laughs> yeah. He has somebody who does his tweets for him. He just tell he texts the person what to say. He doesn't go on his Twitter. He doesn't read his replies. Yeah. When when he was after I did content with him the first year, he was away and his guy was away and his agent Lon Rosen emailed me asking to do three tweets for Magic after the Lakers after Dwight Howard left. You should have tweeted some Boston stuff from his account. No, no, I did it from my account. <laughs> okay. So I set it up like, hey, Magic, Magic has to do these tweets. Mm -hmm. So when they call me, I'm like, oh man, Magic's really going to go in on Dwight Howard. And the tweets were like, were like. Uh, good luck to Dwight Howard in, in, in Houston. And they were all like these generic tweets. I'm like, he, he's on a vacation? He needs me to do this? Dwight Howard is a great rebounder. The Lakers will be fine. I'm like, okay, I'll do that one. Uh, is it a bad sign for the Celtics? This is from Austin in Watertown, New York. Is it a bad sign for the Celtics that their second best offensive player is a ponytail wearing Canadian with a, with a pew beard? Pew beard. I've never heard that one before. Uh, my answer, it's a terrible sign. It's one of the number one reasons that uh, they're not going to win this series. Daniel H. writes, Can Cousin Sal's god-awful gambling karma save our country? Trump serving a whole term is plus 120. If Sal throws his bad gambling karma and some dollars on it, I think, I think Trump gets impeached by next Tuesday. Also, if Sal saves our country, I think his gambling karma would make drastic improvements. My answer, I asked Sal about this. I was mm -hmm. like, maybe you need to do this. He had already bet on Trump not serving a full term. So, so, we're, just, with, so we're screwed. We're getting eight years of Trump, basically. <laughs> Cousin Sal made that happen. Oh, man. This is a good one from Jordan, a suffering Kings fan from PA. Kings fans don't even write long suffering. They're just like, I'm <laughs> suffering. I'm in pain right now. <laughs> I'm hurt. Please yeah. help. Send first aid. With Boogie in the fold... It's highly likely the Kings would have finished in the top t in the bottom 10 and their late lottery pick would have gone to Chicago as a result of that game-changing J.J. Hickson trade from 2011. Good point there. Also allowed Scalabasi to get playing time. He showed signs of potentially being the steal of the 2016 draft. Knowing all this and knowing how it played out, would the Kings rather have DeMarcus Cousins or Buddy Heald, pick number five, pick number 10, and pick number 34, and a better Scalabassier, do we all owe the flying Vs, Vivek and Vlade, I think that's a funny nickname, an apology. I think that trade worked out pretty well for them. Yeah, I think it was the, great. The problem was, the way they handled it was terrible. That they didn't wait till the deadline to trade them was terrible. That they did it so abruptly. It was more how it was handled than the concept of the trade itself, because... <laughs> It's a good point. If they had Boogie, they wouldn't have, you know, they would have lost their pick. And the Vladi concession that he had better deals on the table was just as like, just him saying that. You could, you can, that could it was be a true. Trade. You know, yeah, you don't have to say that to the people because then people are like, oh, these guys really don't know what they're doing. So even if it does work out that this is great, they even, they already admitted that they, they didn't know that that was going to happen. So they can't even take credit for it. It was, uh, Buddy was looked good though. And Scal's going to be good, I think. Listen, if they end up with, with De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Hield, um, Laurie Markinen, Rudy Gay's out. Rudy Caleb Gay Swanigan, out. Yeah. Scale, uh, Scalabassier. Yeah. 
Buddy Healed. I don't know. I think I'd rather have that than Boogie leaving in a year, right? Yeah. And plus, you know, Boogie's a lot. So, Tate, we're doing some stuff with the NBA award show that's going to be on TNT. Yep. Monday night, June 26th, live from New York City, hosted by Drake. Begins at 9 o'clock. The whole inside the NBA crew will be there. All the All-NBA awards, some of that, some of which I voted for, mm-hmm. are available. And they're also doing some fan awards, too, like Best Dunk, things like yeah. that. Yeah, Assist of the Year, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Uh, they're announcing the All-Rookie Team, Most Valuable Player, all that stuff. Good times. Oh, but the fan awards are Best Style, Block of the Year, Game Winner, Assist, Dunk, Performance of the Year. So we thought... We would help them out by coming up with some fake awards that didn't make the cut <laughs> yes. on this podcast over the next few weeks. Um, we're going to have little spots in here where we come up with a fake award. This fake award is brought to us by Tyler from Lulangwe Malawi, M-A-L-A-W-I. Where's that? Um, Malawi? Yeah. I didn't get my geography degree from Carolina. I'm sorry. Tyler. All right. We'll just call him Tyler. After his Game 7 performance against the Wizards, Kelly Olynyk has to have the lead in the Tyron Lue Memorial Overplayed pair, Player for One Playoff Performance Award, right? Is there anyone else that has a better shot of getting three years and $55 million from Phil Jackson than the Knicks? Um, first of all, that's not called the Tyron Lue Award. That's called the Jerome James Award. Mm. In 2005, Jerome James on Seattle, when Seattle was making their little playoff run, he yep. was this overweight center who stayed in shape for two months, played well. And then as it was happening, I was joking in my column on page two at the time that Isaiah was going to sign him to a stupid contract <laughs> and how funny it was going to be. The summer comes, the Knicks signed Jerome James yes. to a terrible contract, like $30 million for four years, something awful. And then he started eating again, and it was a terrible idea. He had millions of dollars to spend on yeah. food, which is never good. Right. <laughs> so the Jerome James memorial contract, I think Kelly's in the lead. Mm-hmm. Kelly won game seven. It's the Kelly Olenek game. I will never get over watching that happen and how hilarious it was at the time. How about being a Washington fan? <laughs> you can't Cleveland even be right mad. Now. Like, the whole Wizards team wasn't even mad. They just were like, I can't believe this is happening. So our first NBA award that actually won't be on the show on TNT on June 26th is uh, the Jerome James Memorial Playoff Performance. I earned myself $40 million extra award. Goes to Kelly Olenek. Nice. Matt Geisman asks, if LeBron loses in the finals and mysteriously retires the next day, where does Larry Bird rank on the all-time forwards list against him? LeBron already passed Larry Bird. I hate to break it to myself and all other Celtics fans. 14 straight years of this is just more impressive than what Bird did. Four MVPs, uh, one less title, incredible durability. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's not a contest anymore. I hate to say it. Danny from Chicago wonders, you often talk about how Chris Paul would not be fun to play with because he is such an asshole. (laughs) (laughs) On the flip side, arguably the least serious player of this generation, Dwight Howard, is perhaps the most disliked NBA superstar ever. So what is the ideal temperament for a star? LeBron is the best player of this era who you'd also want to play with in a playoff game, yet he's still criticized for being too passive and for bitching at his teammates. Maybe you just can't win. I think he can win. His name was Tim Duncan. Yeah, exactly. And and maybe possibly Kawhi is building on that same foundation. Yeah, of Tim that. Duncan. Just study Tim yeah. Duncan's career for 20 years. That's yeah. how we want our teammates to ask. Matthew from Sydney, Australia wonders, when's the next trade value column? We've waited two years. People need to know who you'd rather trade for, the Brow or Giannis. You're going to have to wait for the trade value column. It's a good one. Giannis is in the conversation. Which is amazing. Matt from Buffalo, New York says, in Fast 8, remember the scene where Mr. Nobody is bringing the team together to explain who Cypher is? Cypher was played by Charlize Theron. Yes. They showed Dom's file on a screen. It lists his height at 6'1". Is this the largest misrepresentation of height you've ever seen? I used to laugh at 6'4", Charles Barkley being listed at 6'8", but that's nothing compared to Dom's Interpol file. My answer. I think that is the most Isaiah being listed at five nine is pretty funny because yeah. he's five seven. Mm-hmm. But uh, Vin Diesel being six one is pretty good. Do you think that they like they asked him what he should be listed at? And so he was like six one, six one, Ugh. six one. <laughs> I'm 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 like six feet and three fourths, but you put me down for six one. Okay, okay, Vin Diesel. 
James from Hartford one. This is a good one, actually. Do we really need a 16-team NBA playoff field? Since the Knicks were the eighth seed and made the 1999 finals in a lockout season, no team seeded fifth through eight has made the finals. And only one made a conference finals. Fifth seed Memphis in 2013, mm-hmm. who got swept by San Antonio. So James says, in an 18-year stretch, 71 of the 72 conference finalists are from the top half of seeds. Other than money, is there a competitive reason to have such a pl- such a large playoff field? No, and that's why I wanted to do the uh, entertaining as hell tournament. Open open the other seeds to a one game playoff, and why not make make the first couple rounds more fun? Because we're going to end up with the top four anyway in some order. And the seven game series just for those in round one is yeah, ridiculous. It's just it should ridiculous. be it should be five yeah. games. Yeah. And the way to do that for a five game is you make the one and the two seed get four of the five at home. So they still have a, a major advantage. But get it over faster. But people don't even talk about like the scoring, the points, like how it rigs the, the record books. Like LeBron, you know, is like creeping right. up on. He's like playing he 20 play playoff it. games yeah, a year. Yeah, exactly. Like he's playing more games. Chuck from New Hampshire wonders, there's an old quote in soccer. A good manager can make a team 10% better, but a bad manager can make a team 30% worse. What's the formula for NBA coaches? I think it's about the same. I think I would say an NBA coach can make a team 20% better though. Mm-hmm. Brad Stevens makes the Celtics 20 to 25% better. Popovich makes the Spurs 20 to 25% better. Scotty Brooks made the Wizards 30% worse in game 7. <laughs> so I would say I would say it's a 20 to 30 balance. Um Jeff from Natick asks if Westbrook was an NFL QB you're going to like this one, Tate. Mm-hmm. He would take off running 75% of the time, make a ton of spectacular plays, and barely squeak into the wild card because every defense would know what's coming. The sports media would blame his receivers, wondering how can you expect Westbrook to be great if his receivers aren't even trying to block for him. In the playoffs, they would flame out, and the narrative would be, how could Westbrook uh, pass to those shitty receivers? They weren't even trying to get open. It's like they were blocking for some reason. Also, in this analogy, Westbrook would be the team's slot corner and blatantly not cover anybody. It's a little harsh. <laughs> a little harsh for Jeff from Natick. I do think the whole thing of, and we saw it with uh, Harden too, of the offense built around one guy doing the same thing all the time. Yes. Has a shorter shelf life in the playoffs when you're seeing it game after game after game and you just kind of figure it out. Yeah. Because people have their spots, regardless yeah. of what, like Russ knows where he's trying to go and eventually you realize what he's trying to do. And you're yeah, like, and it's okay. like, oh, he's going to do this, he's shooting. Yeah. Uh, last break to talk about. My old friend, me undies. I don't want to pick favorite sponsors of the BS podcast because I love them all. I love them all like my kids. But I will say that I wear me undies every day. I probably think about them the most. It was the first read we ever did when we first started. It was the first, the first, was the first thing did. you ever said in a microphone. Yeah, me undies. I wear them every day. I think so. I, they're in my mind every day. <laughs> they're in my they're in my heart every day. And if you've been settling for store bought store bought underwear five packs. I just feel sorry for you. Just words on on some great underwear. MeUndies are made out of sustainably sourced micro-modal, a fabric three times softer than cotton. Unbelievably comfortable. The top drawer of my dresser is filled with MeUndies. I like this. They're like kind of the big boxers that they have, but they're not boxers. They're soft. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of let the boys roam around (laughs) the ranch. It's great. I love MeUndies. Once you go MeUndies, never go back. Save up to 33% off MeUndies with a monthly subscription. Select your style, size, and plan. I have the boys roaming around the ranch Yeah, I was going to say, that's a great yeah, slogan. Great you should plan. sell that to them. MeUndies will send you undies that they think will make you swoon for each month. If you're not ready for that, you still save 20% off your first pair plus free shipping by just going to MeUndies.com slash BS. Once again, that's MeUndies.com. Slash BS. Yeah, they should name that underwear after me and have a picture of me riding a horse. Yes. And some and some <laughs> Let the boys roam. Let the boys roam, man. The Bill Simmons edition. Christopher D wonders, is anyone in the history of the league better at chase down blocks than LeBron? It's a great question. I thought about it. Jordan, I still have above LeBron because he was like three inches shorter and it was more amazing when he did it. Yes. But it was same same thing. It was like you, you could see it coming at half court. You knew what he was going to do. The other guy knew, and he did it anyway. LeBron, when he does it, it looks like he's doing it. Like he's thinking about how he looks as he's doing it, if that makes any sense. Like he's like he's like hesitating a little bit to make right. sure it looks right. It's, yeah, it's a it's different true. thing. 
I hope I said this guy's name right. Oh, no, this is different. Uh, Sean Fer Ferrarini. He wrote this on May 2nd. So just as a caveat. It's May 2nd. The fact that 538 is giving the Cavs a 3% chance to win the NBA title is ridiculous. Did they watch LeBron destroy the Raptors last night? I'm a huge Celtics fan. But giving Boston a 46% chance of making the finals compared to Cleveland's 23% chance. Oh, it's I'm sorry, 23% chance, not 3%. Uh, compared to Cleveland's 23% chance is just wrong. It's the worst prediction 530 has had in the last year, and that's saying something. Wow, shots fired. Yeah, wow. Sean. God, put the gun away. <laughs> I mean, that's why win expectancy and all that stuff drives me crazy. Yeah, I just watch I, the game. I hate win expectancy. Yeah. Win expectancy to me is the emotional support dogs of stats and playoff, all that stuff. It's just stupid. It's, you can't judge <laughs> a team like the Cavs with, when they have LeBron. You can't put that in a normal formula. If we were simulating the games, yes, then it would make sense. But we're not. We're going to play them in real life, and things are going to happen. And we'll see what happens. My win expectancy of hating win expectancy is 100%. <laughs> Ian Warrington wonders, if the Warriors face the Cavs in the finals, should they take heart from the fact that no one knows how to limit a LeBron-led offense like Mike Brown? I, wow, oh. my answer, shots fired! <laughs> the guns are out. The bullets are firing. Jesus. Wouldn't it be amazing though if Mike Brown and like gets to go up against LeBron in the finals? Like a a, a man that LeBron James basically put it all on yeah. when they were winning sixty two games, whatever sixty one games, whatever it was in two thousand nine. He basically was like Mike Brown can't get us past the over the hump. Yeah, and then Mike Brown gets to coach against him in the finals to stop him from destiny. That's beautiful. I really and everyone for Mike says Brown. Mike Brown is the nicest guy ever. He seems people like love it. Mike Brown. Yeah, he seems like a nice guy. I wish he could coach. <laughs> Me too. Danny from Brooklyn wonders, on Area 21, did you see Big Baby <laughs> praise Rondo while pushing CP3 under the bus and then backing over him a few times? Should that ever happen to someone called the point guard? God. So Big Baby had already trashed da Doc Rivers and Chris Paul, and then Doc Rivers mm. showed up on the screen on Area 21, and Big Baby was mortified, and it was <laughs> hilarious. But there was a really interesting part. And I think it was online only when they start talking about Rondo and Big Baby just goes out of his way to talk about, it. I love this guy right here. Mm -hmm. This guy made me a better player. I would have fought through a wall for him. And that's how you have to be. And Chris, you're just not like that with Chris. He doesn't make you feel that way. He doesn't make you feel. He had this whole like minute and a half. Yeah. I actually thought it was going to be a bigger deal when I watched it. I was like, wow, this overweight bench player who seems like a head case somehow managed to put into words all the reasons I'm suspicious of Chris Paul is a great player because Chris Paul didn't make him better. And yeah. he's like, this guy might have the stats. Like he didn't say the stats part, but it was just like, this guy just didn't, doesn't make guys better. You have to fit into what he does. Yes. That's not what a great point guard does. He's passing to you where you should be in his mind. And Ron then he's mad at you yeah, and you miss exactly. it. Exactly. And Rondo's like getting you to your spot to get you your right. shot. Right. It's a totally yeah. different situation. So, Justin Pagano writes, since 1969, these are 10 guys that won finals MVP more than once. Jordan, Shaq, LeBron, Magic, Duncan, Hakeem, Kobe, Larry, Kareem, and Willis Reed. Take out Reed and swap in Bill Russell, since the award is named after him. And there's your top 10 for the 2,300-page paperback 19th edition of the Book of Basketball. I feel like this is an almost perfect measure. Everyone I want in there is in there except maybe Wilt. And everyone I'd want to exclude for some reason is already excluded because they didn't win a second one. I even like that Steph doesn't already have even one. I want two more out of that guy before we even talk about him historically. Uh, and then he talks about the guys with one are D. Wade, Parker, Pierce, Dirk, Kawhi, and Iggy. Pierce is retired now, obviously, but Kawhi would be your only chance to get in that group. Yeah. That's a really interesting measure. I like that. Mm -hmm. The finals, you have to have two final, the two finals MVP club. So Duncan should have four. Mm -hmm. They get in 07, they gave it to Tony Parker because he played well for a couple games, but I, I was personally insulted by that. They're going to win it anyway. Like Plus, like, who's guarding Tony Parker on the Cavs? You know? It's and also, it's Tim, yeah. Tim, it's Tim Duncan's team. You mm -hmm. don't give anyone else the final unless Tim Duncan just sucks. But uh, that's a great measure. I really like that. I went, I don't know if I did this in my book or not, but 
I think I figured it out in my book. I think Russell would add eight finals MVPs. Mm. That's <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> um, we're going to wrap up soon. Justin from Austin, Texas wonders, do you think Ja Rule is more pissed off about the <laughs> Fire Festival debacle or missing out on the remainder of the Fast franchise? Easily the Fast franchise. Yeah, that was a huge... The yeah. Fire thing will go away. Nobody will remember it. Somebody will probably make a documentary about it, but he missed out on a huge payday with the Fast franchise. Yeah, when he was in Too Fast, Too Furious, when he was in the opening you know, car race scene, I think yeah. he thought that he had a big deal. He had a, he had a big thing going for him. He had Murder, Inc. behind him. It was a huge, good time for Ja Rule. Huge mistake. Um... John from San Francisco wonders, please tell me how long Greg Popovich is going to be able to treat people like shit without being called out on it. Is it because as a society, we've determined that sideline reporting and press conference questions are dumb professions and no one cares what happens to them? My answer, I think people use pop as their proxy mm-hmm. for how much they hate this stuff. Mm-hmm. But he is acting like an asshole. Mm-hmm. I told you what I would do if I was a sideline reporter. Right yeah, now. no. Ask him about wine. Ask him about anything. Battles. Else. Yeah. What civil war battle is this game right now? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Who cares? I mean, what's he really going to tell you that's going to matter in the moment anyway? Just ask would, him. Yeah. Or why not use it to find out other information? Like, Pop, what was the last movie you saw? And he's like, Hacksaw Ridge. Okay, back to you, Mike. Yeah. When's the last time you called Boris Dio? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of car does Tim Duncan drive? A <laughs> Kia? Okay, back to you, Mike. On a recent BS pod, your producer Tate predicted that CP3 will get a statue at Staples along with Magic Chick, Kareem, Jerry, Shaq, did, Gretzky, did, Luke, Oscar, and Sir I did Kobe. not predict it. I said that's what he wants. That's what oh. he said he wants. All right. Well, the clarification. <laughs> Where would a CP3 statue go and what is his statue pose? Um, I think his statue pose is him yelling at a ref. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to think of the... Because the Clippers are second class citizens at Staples. Where is the most second class citizen y place that they could put that statue? It should be across the street. You know, it's like the little, like, you know, Staples is right in front of the stadium. He should be across the street on the other side where LA Live no, is. No, that's too prominent. <laughs> I would say when you're walking down uh, Figueroa. Yeah, on the backside right there. That backside where it's super windy and terrible mm-hmm. and it's like the. Everything is too, the lines are too long where LA Live is. So you got to walk around to the other side. Yep. And it's just a sad, dark, windy walk. I would put the statue they there. They should put like Danny Manning, Chris Paul. <laughs> yeah. or just like all have the them should be on the windy walk. <laughs> La- other Clippers question. What would be the opening shot of the 30 for 30 on the Clippers moving to Seattle? Great, great lead. Here, this is from James in Dallas. Here is choices. Doc Rivers on the first tee at Brentwood Country Club. Doc Rivers throwing his arms up in disbelief at a foul call. Literally any other Clipper throwing his arms up in disbelief at a foul call. Balmer fidgeting in his seat. A bad State Farm commercial. A Mayflower truck. V. Stiviano. Mm. A Starbucks. Or other. I would go with other. I, I would start with a montage of guys writhing on the floor right after they got injured. Yeah. Followed by the Mayflower truck. And then... Then you you have this montage, and then it's Doc Rivers in the golf course. Yeah. And he, he hits his next drive, and he's walking. And he's like, I thought I could change the Clippers, and I couldn't. And then he's like, hey, did you see my ball? Is it on the fairway? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, I like that idea. David in Oklahoma wonders, at this point, do we have to assume that Big Ball or Bland is a hoax developed by Nathan Fielder, right? $220 for sandals? My answer, it's it's not. You can't rule it out. It'd be awesome if Nathan for you season three or season four, whatever they're on now, starts with Levar Ball. That would be the greatest thing ever. How are we doing on time? Doing great. Sixty nine minutes. Okay. Josh Bailey wonders. I love all the BS pods, especially the one with Rappaport. <laughs> I feel I must call something to your attention. The country that Kristaps Porzingis comes from is Latvia, not Lativia. That makes them the Latvian gangbanger, not the Lativian gangbanger. Feel free to correct Rappaport or not. Your choice. He knows. Um, the whole joke is that Rappaport, <laughs> the first time he brought him up, called him the Lativian gangbanger accidentally. Yes. And I said he's from Latvia. And Rappaport said, I don't care. He's I, Lativia, Latvia. I don't care. Yeah. And that's become the joke. Joe H. and NC wonders, if the Grizz blow it up, is there any possible way to get Conley on the Bucks? 
Oh. Oof. Please tell me there is. Perfect fit. Jabari, Delhi, two first rounders. Is that even close? It would have been close if Jabari was hadn't blown out his ACL six mm-hmm. months ago. It's what, a great idea. What happens to Jabari? Just the side tangent of that. I, cause it feels no, like I'm they're not already, talking Duke yeah. guys with you. You enjoy it too much. <laughs> You're such a, nobody I thinks like you're genuine. No, I nobody like thinks you're genuine. I want him to do well. Nobody yes. thinks you're genuine. Yeah, I want him to do well. M- Matthias in Jena, Germany. Really getting some great countries in this yeah, one. No, Jerusalem this and Germany and Ma- Malaya, whatever yeah, that country is. international. He, he wonders, Andrew Sharp pointed out four years ago, Kawhi might, may not be the great player he is if another team drafts him. Who is the biggest what if the Spurs drafted him guy in the league? Um, I went historical for my answer. Mm-hmm. C Web. If you do C Web's career over again, and he ends up on the Spurs with Pop, we discuss him as one of like the eleven best players of all time. Mm-hmm. The way we discuss Tim Duncan, his everything about it changes. Might well, he been. is Tim Duncan, right? Like that's what he is. Like he's right there next to David Robinson, and then he's the pillar for the future, and yeah. they build from him. And, and they he's don't learned have all the right ways yeah. to play, and he's they don't tank in '97. It's yeah. yeah. Um, after another challenge victory, where does CT rank in all-time Boston athletes? I have him below Bird and Brady and Ortiz, but above or Williams, Pierce, and Gronks. Gronk thoughts. That's from John from San Francisco and California. My answer, um, or Brady bird in some order or T's and Williams CT and sixth Gronk's really taking a hit in Boston. Gronk took a hit. Gronk's got to stay in the field. Yeah. But CT a couple challenge titles now, mm-hmm. um, by far the greatest athlete in challenge history <laughs> still going. Yeah. I don't know what's left in his tank, but there's something left. And, I, and you're pulling for him because of the DM storyline. Tim Williams has a tunnel yeah. named after him. I don't know what we're doing with CT. Um, I will end with this one from Riley in Madison, Wisconsin. Back in March 2014, you wrote about the Action Hero Championship belt. In October 2014, John Wick was released. He blew your load a few months too early. Chapter 2 comes out on Blu-ray soon. It's time for Keanu to officially take the belt from Liam. Don't forget this gem you wrote. Rule number one, over anything else, I need to believe our hero can kick anyone, everyone's ass in any conceivable situation at any given time, and he needs to believe this too. This rule disqualifies A-listers like Keanu Reeves. I wrote that in 2014. Mm. Riley says, good call, Bill Kuyper Jr. <laughs> that hurts. Words yeah, hurt. tough. Words hurt and that hurt. Mm-hmm. And listen, I, I have to live with that for the rest of my life. It's one of my worst calls ever. Um, I'll maybe one with this one from Zivanamir Brekolo. Love it. I hope I said that correctly. He wonders, I heard you talk about Isaiah Thomas's extension a lot, but you haven't asked yourself the most important question. What would Bill Belichick do? Oh, he's he's out. He's out for this year. If it's Belichick, no way he gets a big deal. No way he gets the max. Belichick definitely trades him. <laughs> yes. This summer. Mm-hmm. He might keep him for an extra year and let him go, but I think he trades him this summer. And I, th- I think it would be a trade that people are like, wow, he did not get a lot back for him. But he's just trying to wipe his hands clean of all that money. <laughs> Belichick <laughs> trades him to a division rival. Like, he ups the stakes. He trades him to the <laughs> Nets. <laughs> yeah, here you go, Nets. Give us some more picks. And everybody in Boston goes nuts. He's the worst. Belichick's lost his fastball. Mm-hmm. Then he takes Markel Fultz. And... Gabe, I'll do one more. Gabe in Portland said, my friends and I have a long-running conversation about the most mediocre band ever. Here are five popular suggestions, no particular orders. The Doobie Brothers, they're fine. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, I think they're mediocre. My friends like them more. Billy Joe, I love him too much. My friends think he's mediocre. Steve Miller Oof. band, probably the favorite right now. Earth, Wind, and Fire, they're fine. What? Then he says, I've been reading you forever. I've never had a mailbag question posted. Answer or not, I'm really proud of this question. Gabe, go back to the drawing board. Earth, Wind, and Fire. First of all, all Billy five of those Joel. bands are yeah. better. All what? five of those, but Doobie Brothers were like iconic. Yeah, this is good. Uh, you just got to do better than that. 
You just have to. Toto is the most mediocre band ever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Toto won some Grammys. They were terrible. It's like they're right in the vortex. Yeah. But man, Billy Joel. Billy Joel sold out Billy. Dodger Stadium. It's like 75. Yeah, go Come watch on, Moving Gabe. Out. Come on. So if you want to send us a question, um, you can do that by emailing us at the mailbag at the ringer.com. Thanks to Simply Safe. Remember, it's never been easier to protect your home and family. Thanks to Simply Safe. Order your home security online. Set up your system in under an hour. Then you can start enjoying 24 7 professional protection immediately. No long term contracts, no hidden fees. Go to simplysafebs.com today to protect your home and get 10% off. Don't forget about meandies.com slash BS. 20% off your first pair plus free shipping. ZipRecruiter.com slash BS. You can post jobs there for free. Tate's podcast, GM Street with Mike Lombardi, and Teed Up with Mark Titus. You too. That's on Ringer University. Yep. Well, GM Street is on Ringer the Ringer NFL, NFL show. Mm-hmm. Teed Up is on Ringer University. Ringer University. We made if fun you want of to hear all, more of Tate. Yeah, we made fun of the combine, the the measurables. We made fun of all the the fat people that went to the combine. And you watch Beautiful Girls. You streamed it. Yes. Because you wanted Rappaport is. We can say he's your favorite BS podcast guest. He's. You enjoy him the most. He's in the Hall of Fame BS podcast guest. As far you're as the I'm most concerned. excited when he's coming in. Yeah, because I just you never know what's, know what's gonna, gonna happen. happen. The you last don't know what one, you're gonna have to edit out. Oh man, the last one was something else. But yeah, too funny. So he's you watched great. Beautiful Girls, which came out almost before you were born. Yes. And uh, and what'd you think? I thought it was a hit. I thought Rappaport was the star though, and you told me that before. Rappaport like, owns that movie. Yeah, he does. He's the funniest. They're one. all sisters, Willie. <laughs> They're all sisters. <laughs> They're all in collusion together. They're all. Has talking that movie to each other. held up? The themes of that movie. Yeah. It, it has. The, the Tim Hutton, Natalie Portman um, relationship's a little weird, right? I'm in love with Natalie Portman, like, my whole life. Like, I yeah. grew up being in love with her. Right. So seeing her... You're almost the same age. Yeah, we're like, the, we, like, grew up at the, the, same, the same times. And Jackie's a beautiful movie. It was great to see her then. So to see her at a young age, like, put me back where I was. So it, the, it, it was great. But it was a little creepy that 30-year-old cre- yes, Tim Hutton the, is, yeah, like... Yeah, Tim Hutton, that, that's a whole... Peering through the window, wondering yeah, what's going on like, with her. I didn't like all that, but, yeah. you know... It didn't bother me when I saw the movie, but after I had a daughter and I watched it again, I'm like, what's he doing? Like, if I had yeah. my neighbor, like, checking out, hey, what's my she- daughter's, like, mm. in the driveway with her bike. She's like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, why is this guy talking to my daughter? Yeah, and please, yeah. I'm going to have to fight Leave Natalie you know? alone, yeah. Yeah, leave Natalie alone. All right. Maybe every every time we do a mailbag, you'll have to give a review on one movie that came out before you were born. I'm in. All I'll right. watch any movie. Thanks, Tate Frazier. Thanks to Seat Geek. Thanks to everybody. Don't forget Celtics fans. Chant your baby at LeBron tonight. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the uh, the BS Podcast mailbag. Back next week, we have a bunch of uh, bunch of celebrity guests next week. So stay tuned for that. Until then. <laughs>